Hello everyone! Do you know what I've never legitimately done despite hundreds of hours of gameplay and hundreds of years in-game? Collected all the star drops. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I've even started a brand new file and this guy is going to be the first one to collect them all for me. Now for those of you that don't know what a star drop is, a mysterious fruit that empowers those who eat it. The flavor is like a dream, a powerful personal experience yet difficult to describe to others. You're not likely to find it in item form by the way. Basically what these do when you find them is increase your energy by 34 points. You start with 270 so each one gives you a considerable boost. And these are very helpful because you need energy to do almost anything in game. There are 7 star drops in total and we're going to be going through them in roughly the order you could expect to find them in your playthrough. The first star drop you're likely to encounter actually comes from the mines and you can't even access the mines until your 5th day of spring. Most people will find themselves in the mines almost daily in the early stages of the game because they're trying to collect as many gems and ore as they can. The gems make you a lot of money but the ore is needed for basically crafting anything else. Every 10 floors along the way is going to reward you with a treasure chest which obviously generally provide you with something useful to use along the way. Make your way all the way to level 100 and then the treasure chest, you guessed it, it's a star drop. And you definitely earned it by now because you spent a ton of energy getting this far down into the mines. You found a star drop, it's strange but the taste reminds you of star drops. Your maximum energy level has increased. So now we're all the way up to 304. Linus, you should be taking notes. I just worked really hard and was rewarded and got to eat something. Our next star drop comes from meeting and getting familiar with some of the local NPCs. Why hello, purple haired weirdo, it's nice to meet you. Oh that's right, I heard someone new was moving on to that old farm. Yes, I'm the new guy. It's kind of a shame really, I always enjoyed exploring those overgrown fields by myself. Well good news Abigail, you still can because I'm not actually a farmer. Unless you can consider me to be farming marriages. As you probably already know, giving people gifts makes them like you, it's just like real life. Give them enough gifts and eventually they'll hit their limit. Abigail is at 8 hearts her current limit, notice she's currently single. Well, she's gonna stay that way because we're actually gonna marry Leah. Now once you have a single NPC at 8 hearts, you can give them a bouquet bought from Pierre and you will at that point start dating and yes, you can date multiple NPCs at the same time. You want to get more serious? I feel the same way. The thing is Leah, I don't want to but I kinda have to for this video. I'm kinda nervous, aren't you? Not really, to be honest this is probably the last time we'll ever speak. Now that Leah is actually my girlfriend at 8 hearts, we can now move her up to 10 hearts with a few well placed gifts. Basically just pretend I gave her a few gifts. Well this is awkward. Once you have your current favorite NPC at 10 hearts, Go to the beach on a rainy day, the right side that you have to unlock, buy a mermaid pendant from the ghost. At which point you can ask your boyfriend or girlfriend to marry you. And when I say ask, I mean you're pretty much just telling them. For some reason, Leah doesn't want to marry me and I'm not really sure why. She's at 10 hearts, she is my girlfriend, but she doesn't want to marry me. So I guess we'll try it again tomorrow? Okay, today I'm 99% sure she's gonna say yes because they don't turn me down very often at all. Oh, the real DF, I'm sorry but I don't want to marry you right now. I don't know what to say right now. This doesn't happen very often at all. Well then how about you, option number one? I'll accept this, thank you. Okay, we're officially dating, she's very happy about that. I didn't know you felt the same. I didn't until Leah turned me down. Alright, twice the girlfriends, hopefully not twice the rejection. Abigail, will you marry me? Abigail doesn't want to marry you right now. I don't know why no one wants to marry me suddenly. This isn't a good sign. Of course, if you actually want to get married, you need to have your house upgraded at least one time. Robin the Carpenter is the one to do that. 10,000 gold, 450 wood, and 3 days time is all it's going to take. My favorite part about all this is it's not that they can't marry you before you have a kitchen, it's that they don't want to. And she accepts, 3 days from now, we'll get married. Here we have a beautiful ceremony, it's a bi-weekly tradition for myself and it's all just a lot of fun. Now remember how they were at 10 hearts when we got married? Well, now they can go all the way up to 12 hearts. And if you get them even beyond 12 hearts to a secret 13th heart, they'll give you a star drop. Followed by this amazing dialogue. 
Honey, I wanted to give you that fruit as a symbol of my love. Can you tell me where you got it so we can get more? That would be very helpful to a farm. As you can see, she's 13 out of 12 because I was giving her prismatic shards, which everyone loves. At this point, you're free to divorce your spouse. Or just keep them forever and ignore them. It's almost the same difference except for divorce costs you 50,000 gold. But thanks for the star drop. The next star drop on our fun little list comes from the Stardew Valley Fair, which happens on the 16th of fall. So you're going to have to play through a few seasons to get to this one. The fair basically changes the entire town for a day. It starts at 9am, once you leave, it's night time. This guy sells you all sorts of prizes for your star tokens. Everything's quite interesting, but it's a star drop we're after for 2,000 star tokens. Now, star tokens are something that can just be bought for 50 gold each. So, to buy the 2,000 you would need would cost you about 100,000 gold. Luckily, there's a way that's a little bit cheaper to do, because you don't really want to spend 100,000 gold, at least in your first fall, on a star drop. You can actually do the Stardew Valley Fair and complete it in a ground display. You can get some star tokens that way. But I've done nothing on this farm, so I have nothing to display. You can play the strength game. It basically acts similar to the fishing game. You just need to click where the red bar is at the top. And you'll be rewarded for this monumental task with a single star token. Anything less and you get nothing. Strength level, gym teacher. All the games you play can reward you small amounts of star tokens. In my opinion, they're not really worth it. The grunge display can be worth it. If you put the Mary's purple shorts found on Marnie's floor on display, you will get 750 star tokens just for that. The mayor won't approve, but I certainly will. Doing a display legitimately will get you 50 star tokens for fourth place, 200 for third, 500 for second, and a full 1000 for first. So to get the 2000 you need for the star drop, you'd have to get first place in the grunge display two years in a row, and who wants to wait that long? The best way to do this is to buy a small amount of star tokens from this young lady. Let's buy, say, 20 star tokens for 1000 gold, that's not bad at all. Now this game is the one you want to be focusing on. This shady looking gentleman, if we talk to him, step right up, pick a color and place your bet for a chance to double your wager. It seems like a 50-50 chance of orange and green, but the thing is, it lands on green 75% of the time and orange 25% of the time. That means it's going to hit green three times to orange's one. Now, because we have three to one odds, simply bet half your star tokens. Even if you lose, you're still going to have more to bet again. Simply bet half of your total amount. So we have 10 of our 20 star tokens wagered on green. There's a 75% chance for it to land on here. And we win. So we double down, now we're up to 30. So this time we bet 15 and I think you get the picture. Or if you're feeling impatient, you can just bet your whole amount and really take a risk. Already I'm up to 153 star tokens and I haven't lost once. 228 and I think you see the point. Now if we just simply go ahead and pretend I had the patience to do that 10 more times, we have our 2000 star tokens. I want my star drop, thank you. I didn't even have to embarrass the mayor today. You found another star drop, your mind is filled with thoughts of star drops. Our next star drop comes from the sewers, but we don't have access to the sewers yet. Luckily for me, I've played this game way too much and I know exactly how to get in there. Unfortunately, that means we need to donate 60 items to the museum. Unfortunately, he's not accepting the lucky purple shorts. So now we have the large task before us, we've got to find all the artifacts we possibly can. We need 60 just to unlock the sewers. Well, luckily for me, I'm sitting with 36 right in front of me. You're likely to start finding these artifacts almost on day one. If you spend any time in the mines, you're going to find artifacts. You see those little worms in the ground? Hold them up, you'll find artifacts. You'll just slowly find them as you play throughout the game. Processing geodes is also a great way to find these. So 60 may seem like a lot, but it's really not. You're going to do it naturally probably before you hit this point in time anyway. But that is probably also going to mean sacrificing things like gems you donate to the museum rather than sell it or give it as a gift. This also has the added benefit of giving you some rewards along the way. 
some of which are more useful than others, and some are just kind of interesting. And here's a tip, if you're unsure if you've donated something to the museum, mouse over it. If it gives you an accurate description of what that item is, you have donated it. If it says this, Gunther can tell you more about this if you donate it to the museum, well, you still need to donate it to the museum, so just mouse over it for a quick way to know for sure. And you might have noticed that among these rewards, there's no way to help you get into the sewers. Well, don't freak out just yet, because the morning after you hit 60 items, Gunther decides to show up at your doorstep at 6am. Good morning, I hope it's not too early. Well, I just wanted to stop by and thank you in person for all the wonderful artifacts and minerals you've discovered. You've done so much for one person. In fact, I've just received a letter from the Office of the Regional Secretary of Artifacts, who are being honored with a coveted Golden Shovel Award for our significant contributions to the field. Yeah, you might want to just pass that along to me, seeing as I single-handedly found every item in your museum. And it's all thanks to you. Well, I should let you get back to your work. And he goes to leave, but wait. He's remembered something. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a gift for you. It's an old key that's been sealed in the museum vault for at least a hundred years. It's a little rusty, but still beautiful. Wait, you have a vault? What else is in there? And we got the rusty key. It has been added to your wallet. Now, if you don't know where your wallet is, go to your skills tab. Your wallet is at the bottom. The rusty key is the only thing I currently have. And it, of course, unlocks the sewers. I suppose for the past several hundred years no one's been into the sewers and they just haven't really needed any maintenance. There's also a second entrance to the sewers in Southern Cindersap Forest and it just kind of leaks out into the ocean because no one cares about the ocean. Once in the sewers you'll find a few interesting things, it's not particularly huge. You might want to try your hand at fishing here. This guy is the one we're after, Krobus. A human visitor? That's me. I would like to purchase your stuff. I don't care what you have to say. Thanks. He sells some pretty interesting and pretty useful stuff. Iridium sprinklers? Yes please. The thing we're after though is a star drop, only 20,000 gold. Remember when we were almost going to spend 100,000 gold at the Stardew Valley Fair? Well, this one's a fifth of the price because Krobus is stupid. And here we go again. Star drop power, we're all the way up to 406 energy and we started at 270. By the way, his iridium sprinklers only on Fridays. Next, we're going to need access to the secret woods. Now you're probably wondering, what are the secret woods and where are they? Well, if you start here at Marty's Ranch and walk all the way to the left, you'll find a large annoying log directly in your path and a regular axe won't break it and neither will a copper axe. However, because you spent all that time in the mines already and have so much ore, you should be able to get your axe upgraded to an iron pickaxe at Clint. And with a few little chops, you'll be rewarded with six hardwood, eight hardwood and access to the secret woods. Chopping logs like that and these also give you a lot of forging experience by the way. The secret woods looks like this, it's full of slimes, some useful forgeables, it's mostly hardwood that I like here, but the thing we're after is this. Old Master Cannoli, still searching for the sweetest taste. Which is simply telling us we need to give this statue something sweet and he'll reward us. Spoiler alert, what he's looking for is the sweet gem berry, it's by far the sweetest thing you've ever smelled. And that was easy enough, wasn't it? But the problem is, you can't just buy the sweet gem berry anywhere, you cannot buy the seeds anywhere. Your best bet to actually get the sweet gem berry is to check the traveling merchant every Friday and Sunday when she's here and hope that she's selling the rare seeds that day. Turns out today she's not, but if you see the rare seeds from her, buy them. Just for a reference, they look like this. Takes all season to grow in fall. They take 24 days under normal circumstances. And by the way, the sweet gem berry is the most valuable crop in the game, so you might want to start growing these as soon as you can. Once they're mature, run them through a seed maker to get more. And just keep doing that process until you have more sweet gem berries and therefore more money than you know what to do with. Again, they grow only in fall, but they work pretty good in a greenhouse, just saying. So, slam this into this guy's face. His eyes go red because he's actually evil. And star drop. Not entirely sure how or why a stone statue is able to give you a star drop, but let's not read into that too far. Thank you, weird statue in the woods. You're just as useful as my spouse was, but that actually took considerably less effort. Now unfortunately, the final two star drops, well, they're considerably harder to get. Now the first one we're going to talk about requires getting the Master Angler achievement. Now can you guess what that requires? Yeah, you've got to catch every fish in the game. Now, if you know where to find the fish, this isn't actually super, super hard to do, but it is going to take a bit of time, being that you have to go through every season, through every type of weather, to find every fish, and some of them are actually pretty hard to catch. Now, you get your first fishing rod as early as day two, 
This idiot named Willy will send you mail, telling you to come and see him. He'll give you a basic fishing rod. From there, you catch basic fish, upgrade your fishing skill, buy better rods, you get the idea. It's a pretty simple process, but again, fairly time consuming. Because like I said, you catch different fish on a rainy day than on a sunny day, different fish in the ocean than you do in the river in town, or in the mountain lake by the carpenter shop, or even in the deep pools of the mines. Yes, Wikipedia is going to be your friend on this one if you want to know where to find all the fish. But to be fair, I do enjoy the fishing in this game, and it is quite a task to catch them all, but it does feel pretty good once it's finally done. And if you're not using the Wikipedia, good luck finding them all. There are also five legendary fish, basically one per season and one found elsewhere. And if you're wondering how many fish there are, well, just take a quick look through all of this. You can see there's quite a few to find. Some of them are very easy to find. Some of them you can only find in one specific location. So if we now just kind of go ahead and pretend that I caught all these fish, it would look something like this. Did I manage to do it in a single day? This is every fish in the game, regular quality, sold overnight. And we definitely got some kind of achievement for that. Not sure what the game is going to give us. Greenhorn for earning 15k because I sold all the fish. Unfortunately, I didn't legitimately catch all those, so I did not get the star drop for it. But once you have actually managed to catch every single fish in a game, Willy will send you a star drop in the mail. So don't worry if you don't find it right away. Check your mail. So thank you, Willy. I'll pretend you gave me this gift for doing this monumental task of catching every single fish. And that means we've only got one left to go. Any guesses where it could be? Honestly, without the Wikipedia, it would be crazy hard to find all these because the game is so deep and there's so many different things you can do. But this final one is definitely the hardest one to do because it's probably the one I've never actually done in a legitimate playthrough. It's something I'm working on and I'm very close to doing, but still, after almost 900 hours, haven't done it. And that would be finishing this nightmare. That's right, all 95 things donated to the museum. Now I know what you're thinking, that's only 35 more things than it was to unlock the sewers. Well, some of these are a lot harder to find than the others. For example, once you start mining, you're going to find things like amethyst and jade all the time. They're everywhere. You're going to find multiples every time you're in the mines. Some things like this gold mask, well, they basically have, I believe, a 0.1% chance of spawning, and that's in the worms. So those worms you kind of see once in a while, well, hold those up. You have like a 1 in a 1,000 chance of getting a gold mask. But things like this dinosaur egg tend to elude me. And that's because things like this have a 1% chance of spawning even when you do have the possibility to find them. For example, the dinosaur egg, you only can find it if you're looking for it using the worms in the ground. Well, it's only going to happen around the carpenter shop in the northern end of the map. And even then, if you're lucky to find worms there, it's a 1% chance. So, you gotta find 100 of those worms up near the carpenter shop to even have a chance of finding it. And sometimes the odds aren't in your favor. For example, I'm still looking for it. And I've been looking for it forever. Even just the task of spawning these items into existence and placing them right now takes time. It's not a lot of fun to do. So to do this actually in a real game to find each and every one of these, be prepared to spend some time. Not that that's a big deal. Like I said, as you're playing along, you're going to find a lot of these just naturally anyway. But if you're going out of your way to try and find them, it's going to take some time. And this process is so enjoyable that I missed an artifact somewhere along the way. So I've got to go back to the museum and figure out which one I missed so I can get the damn achievement. Yep, I count exactly 94 artifacts. I'm missing one. So I've got to figure out which one it is I'm missing. And I couldn't even begin to tell you how very much I don't want to do this right now, but for the sake of finishing this, I'm going to do this. Well, okay, it looks like I got it figured out. It was the prehistoric vertebrae, I believe is what it's called. And that's it. A complete collection. Never done this legitimately. I'm one item away on one of my play files, but... It still eludes me and it actually might do it forever. There's my reward, the final star drop, number seven. Interesting how I actually put it into my backpack before consuming it this time. Well, this is the only one you can actually hold on to. So interestingly enough, once you receive this one from the museum, you can actually sell it. but it doesn't actually give you the money for it. But if you ever do actually get a hold of one you're able to sell, they do sell for quite a bit, 7,777 gold, one of the most valuable items in the game by quite a bit. So just like that, in a single day, this idiot went from zero to hero, from 270 energy up to, let's pretend that's 506 because that's how many he's supposed to have. 506 is the maximum energy you can get from star drops. 
So that's considerable. That's almost twice as much as you have when you start. By the time you find them all, you've probably got your skills pretty high up there, so you're using all your tools pretty efficiently, so that 506 energy is going to go a long ways to making you a better player. 